Welcome to GDs, and this is, Condor, Season 1. Season starts, with Nathan, disposing off dead animals. We learn, that those animals were killed, as they were the test subjects for a plague being developed. We then jump three years, and get to see Joe Turner, spending time with his friend Sam and his wife May, and they are pushing him to start dating again. The following day, Sam picks up Joe, and we get to know that he is an analyst for IEP, a front company of the CIA. Sam tells Joe, that the program he wrote to identify threats in the Middle East, has identified an Arab-American man named Amar Nazari, as a potential terrorist in the States. Knowing this, they have been keeping an eye on him, and today, he changes routine, and they feel that he will be carrying out an attack. Being in the Situation Room, Mr. Abbott, Deputy Director of the CIA, asked Joe, if Amar Nazari is indeed a threat, as he was heading towards a crowded stadium, with an unknown package. Joe, not making the software to be used in America, is not comfortable taking a call either way. Not having an answer, Joe is asked to leave the Situation Room. Joe, being back, and in order to distract himself, goes on a date with Kathy Hale. Kathy, feeling Joe to be preoccupied with something, decides to leave. Joe, feeling guilty, apologizes to her, and walks her home. As he returns, he lets his uncle know, that he is not comfortable being part of a system, that spies on its own people, and thus wants to quit. Bob, being the one who recruited him, tells him, that he will talk with him in the morning, and for now, he should watch the news. As Joe watches the news, he learns, that the FBI shot and killed a terrorist, and they found a biological agent on him, and he was apparently planning to release a mnemonic plague at the stadium. Bob, visits Joe, and the other analysts, and congratulates them on stopping a terrorist attack. He also lets them know, that till six weeks ago, they had no information about the target, in addition, the device they found on him was quite advanced, and thus, they feel that it's not over, and he wants them to put everything they are doing on hold, and look for the people who tried to attack them. Joe, looking into the same, is able to identify 12 companies, that invested heavily in the pharma companies, which would have made them a lot of profit, if things went as planned. On the other hand, we get to see Nathan, as he packs another device of the plague, and hands it over to an ambassador, and lets him know, that his men will pick it up at the embassy later. And we see him carrying the same to Saudi Arabia. Nathan, also gets to know, that an analyst Joe Turner, found out about the 12 companies, that invested in pharma companies. Knowing the same, he sends his details to an asset, to take care of him. We later see him informing the same to Sam. Sam, knowing the same is quite upset, and we see him copying files on a drive, where the attack on the stadium was termed as a false flag operation. Sam, wanted to come clean to Bob, but fearing the people behind the attack, he is not able to do the same. On the other hand, Gabrielle, one of the assassins who got the assignment, meets Joe at a bar. She befriends him, and they later spend the night together. The next day, as Joe reaches the office, the assassins, with the help of their inside man, attack their office, killing everyone. Joe, being out for a break, luckily survives. The assassins Gabrielle and Deacon, getting assistance, are able to locate Joe on the subway. Gabrielle, gets on the train, while Deacon, follows it on the street. But Joe, is able to evade them. Bob, getting to know about the attack, reaches the office. Being there, he receives a call from Joe. Bob tells him, that only the CIA knew about this office, and that means they have a mole. Bob, not sure who he can trust, asks Joe, to meet at the park where they used to go. Joe, before going to the park, picks up some supplies. But before he could get to Bob, Deacon, knocks him down, as they were tracking Bob's phone. And they go after Joe. Sam, feeling guilty about his involvement, reaches there at the right moment, and he is able to get Joe out. Joe, being in car with Sam, realizes that Sam is involved in the attack, and causes him to crash the car. As Sam tries to explain his side to him, he is killed by Deacon, while Joe is shot by Gabrielle. On the other hand, we get to know more about Nathan, we learn, that he is presently working for a private defense company called White Sand. And he was recruited after his brother died in Iraq. The head of the company Gareth, informed Nathan on recruitment, that a bunch of people from the CIA, are planning to do something about the threat from the Muslim world, and he will be responsible for seeing the whole operation through, and being a liaison between everyone. At present, Nathan is quite annoyed with Gareth, as he compromised the entire operation, by investing in the pharma companies. While Bob, 
on getting back to the office learns, that Joe's name was given to the press, as being the prime suspect in the shooting at his office. Bob, is quite angry with the same, it is when he learns, that he is no longer in charge of the operation, and has been replaced by Marty Frost, and she is the one who informed the press. She lets Bob know, that she knows about Joe's anti-government records, which he tried to hide. Despite Bob trying to explain to her, that it is not who Joe is, she seemed determined to treat him as a suspect. In addition, we also get to know, that Marty holds a grudge against Bob. Later we see Joe, going to Kathy's home, and she invites him in. It is when we learn, that Joe survived, as he was wearing a bulletproof vest, that he picked up before meeting Bob. Being there, he sees on the news, that he is being considered as the prime suspect in the mass shooting. Knowing the same, he holds Kathy down, in order to prevent her from calling the cops, and he tries to process the day's events. While May, learns about her husband's death, and she is quite devastated by it. As she is questioned by Abbott, about Sam's work, she gets more furious, as she has no answers, and doesn't know anything about her husband's work. On the other hand, Bob, being frozen out of the investigation, gets FBI agent Sharla Shepard, assigned to the task force. We learn, that Sharla, was in a relationship with one of the employees who got killed. Bob, gets in touch with her, and tells her, that he wants her help, in order to find out the truth, as he thinks Joe is innocent, and this is some kind of a cover-up. He also lets her know, that he pulled out all her details about being involved with Sarah, and no one knows about her relationship. While Nathan, learns about Joe being alive, and he asks Gabrielle to take care of him, as Deacon has left the country, and is traveling to Riyadh. Deacon, is also shown to be flogged years prior, when he was being held captive in the Middle East by Al-Qaeda. Joe, uses Kathy's laptop in order to learn more, simultaneously, he tries to convince Kathy that he is not a bad guy. Sharla, going through Joe's phone, was able to find his date on Tinder. And on investigating further, they find, that Kathy never showed to work today. Having a solid lead, they make their way to Kathy's house. Sharla, informs the same to Bob, who indeed is able to warn Joe. As the task force reached there, they find that no one was home. Instead, they find Gabrielle, who somehow reached there before them, but found no one. She lets them know, that she is from law enforcement, and shows them her badge. As they search the house, we learn, that as Joe got warned by his uncle, Kathy tried to make a run for it, but in the process, she was knocked out. Joe, knowing one of her neighbors to be away, and her having the keys to their house to feed the cat, takes an unconscious Kathy there, and ties her up. They narrowly avoid being detected. Joe, feeling bad for taking Kathy as his hostage, tells her his story, and we learn, that Joe graduated from MIT. And as he visited his uncle Bob, along with his girlfriend Janice, for Thanksgiving dinner, Bob revealed to him, that he is in the CIA, and tries to recruit him. He also warned him, about the rebellious nature of his roommates, and how it can get him into trouble. As they returned back, Joe gets into a fight with his roommate Caleb Wolf, who is hacked into the MIT server. With their activities being monitored by the feds, as Caleb hacked the server, they were arrested by them. His uncle was able to get all of them released, and using Joe's friends as leverage, he is able to make him join the CIA, but it costed him his relationship with Janice and Caleb. Hoping Kathy believes him, he tells her, that if she wants, she can leave, but Kathy believing him, decided to stay. Marty, knowing that Joe left only minutes before, thinks that someone might have informed him, and she starts to hunt for the mole. While Bob, visits Abbott, and informs him, that the device they found on Nazari, is quite complicated, being made of carbon fiber, and having advanced dispersal mechanics. Thus, it seems to be a work of a well-funded organization. But being with him, Bob was able to figure out that they are hunting for an informant, and he was able to warn Sharla in time, and she was able to hide her secondary phone. But Gabrielle, joining the task force, has her doubts about her. Later, Kathy sees Caleb on TV, who is an information activist and a hacker, and he lets the world know, that IEP was a CIA front, that developed the algorithm that identified Amar Nazari. Kathy, in order to help out Joe, gets a burner phone for him, and he contacts Janice, and asks her to help him get in touch with Caleb, though she denies it at first, but later, sets up a meeting between them. With Caleb's video being out, Abbott tells Marty, that Joe might have been working for him, like a Trojan horse from the beginning, and he wants her to keep an eye on their mutual friend Janice, hoping that she will lead them to Joe. Marty, sends Gabriella to keep an eye on Janice. As she surveilled her, she is joined by Bob, who is also looking for Joe. 
Joe, leaves for the meeting, and tells Kathy, to inform the cops that she was tied down, and knows nothing. And in case she sees a Middle Eastern woman, she should just run. As Janice leaves, Bob along with Gabrielle follows her, while Joe also makes his way. But it turns out, that Janice knew she was being followed, and she misled them, while Joe, reached the location to meet Caleb. But Caleb was not there, and the person who came there, forces him to take pills, which causes him to black out for a few hours. As he wakes up, he finds that he was with Caleb, and he drugged him, as he was not sure if he can trust him. Joe, asks Caleb, the source of the information he gave out, but Caleb, not trusting him, asks him, to tell what he knows first. Joe, tells him everything he knows. Caleb, after hearing Joe out, tells him, that a month back, as he was traveling, he received an anonymous tip, that on the 11th, a man named Amar Nazari, will be killed by the FBI, before he could release a deadly virus, and they would claim to have found him, because of a program that IEP wrote. But this is only a prerequisite to a bigger plan, which he assures him, that he will tell him on the 11th. But Caleb never heard from him again. His source, is later revealed to be Sam Barber's boss, Eldon Laramer, who died a few weeks back. In a flashback, we get to see May and Sam, attending a party at Abbott's house, where May gets to meet with Eldon and his wife. Later, May saw Sam, in a room with other men, and among those gathered, there was Nathan as well as Garrett, while Abbott, seemed to be the in charge of the group. Joe, was not able to get any more help from Caleb, as he had to leave. Janice reaches there later, and gives Joe a car and tells him, that she will report it stolen in an hour, and lets him know, that this is as far as she can help him. Joe, getting out of there, and learning, that Kathy has still not been found, decided to return back to her. Meanwhile, Gabrielle decided to return to Kathy's house, and Boyd, the leader of the task force followed her. He catches up with her, not sure what she was doing there. She lets him know, that she wanted to see if they missed anything. And being there, she saw the note of feeding the neighbor's cat. Knowing the same, they decided to go into the neighbor's house. As Kathy saw them coming, she hides in the closet, and as they find her, she claimed to know nothing. Boyd, wanted to call it in, but Gabrielle, convinces him not to do so, as Joe might return back. Kathy, knowing the description Joe gave about the assassin, knows that it is Gabrielle. She tries to make them call it in, but they refuse. Kathy, realizing that there might be no way out for her, convinces Boyd with the information she got from Joe, that Gabrielle might indeed be the killer. The confusion caused both of them to pull a gun on each other, and using this distraction, Kathy, makes her way out of there. But Gabrielle, was able to get Boyd to lower his guard, and she shoots and kills him. Joe, also reached there, and as Kathy got out of the house, he takes her with him. But Gabrielle, takes a shot as they tried to get away, and she was successful in hitting and killing Kathy. Meanwhile, in Riyadh, Deacon checks into a hotel, and we get to see him infecting an occupant in the hotel as he slept. Back in States, Joe leaves Kathy's body by the river, while Gabrielle knocks herself out, and calls it in. She tells everyone, that Joe is responsible for everything, and they didn't call it in, fearing for the mole. Sharla, learning this, is quite angry, as she is not sure about Joe. As she visits Bob, he lets her know, that she needs to keep an open mind, and he tells her, that he has gone through Gabrielle's file, and thinks, that she is the killer. Meanwhile May, prepares for Sam's funeral, and as she was out, her house is bugged to keep an eye on her. As they get back, people started coming their house, to show her their support. Eldon's wife, being there, tells May, that she thought her husband was cheating on her, thus she followed him the night he died, hoping to catch him cheating, but instead, she saw her husband being threatened by Sam and another man, and she never saw her husband more afraid. And as she returned home, she learned from a trooper, that her husband died in a car crash. She lets her know, that she has the proof for the same. May, not being able to handle it, gets away from her. She then gets to meet Sharla, who wanted to know more about Sam. As they talk, Joe, who was hiding in their treehouse, is discovered by Sam's younger son, and as he runs, Sharla, being there, goes after him. Sharla, is able to catch him, but he convinces her, that he is not the killer, and she hides him in her trunk. On her way out, Gabrielle stops her, although she is suspicious of her, she allows her to leave. Sharla, returns home, and is now sure that it is Gabrielle who killed everyone, and thus she decides to go after her. She cuffs Joe to the radiator, and gives him a phone, and tells him to call his uncle. At the agency, 
Bob gets to know the existence of the video, where Amar Nazari is seen speaking to Abu Saeed, a known radical, who is an expert in chemical and biological weapons. And he is the same man whom Deacon infected. Bob, is not convinced with the evidence, as it seemed too obvious, and came just at the right moment. As he connects with Joe, he informs him, that someone in the agency, is trying to use a bioweapon in the Arab world, and they will make it look like a terrorist caused it by mistake in their own backyard. Bob now having the breadcrumbs, feels, that Abu Saeed might be the one whom they will blame, and thus he decides to send a team to get to him, so that he can talk with him. Abbott, tries to warn him not to do so, but Bob decided to do it anyways. He also explains to his assistant, that the inside man at the IEP, who helped Joe write the code, socially engineered for Amar Nazari to be flagged, and they took him out before he could explain anything, and thereafter, a two-year-old video of him, meeting with Abu Saeed, mysteriously appears. And his suspicions are confirmed, when he has a talk with Abu Saeed, who is sick because of the virus, and knows nothing about Amar Nazari, and blames them for making him sick. We also get to see Deacon, arriving at Mecca, for the Hajj pilgrimage. While back in States, Gareth is showing various generals, a new technology for spreading vaccines. Abbott, knowing this, is quite concerned, as they will be using the same technology, for the dispersal of the plague. Having enough of Gareth's greed, he asks Nathan to take care of it, as he is one of their most loyal soldiers. Nathan knowing the same, goes to Gareth, but as he belittles him, Nathan kills him, and later, he shoots and kills himself. On the other hand, Eldon's wife, is visited by Gabrielle, who asks her to provide her the evidence she has, and as she turns it over, she kills her. But before dying, she left a copy of the same for May, where she can see Sam, being okay with knowing what is going to happen to Eldon, as they were able to figure out, that he has been talking with Caleb. May, seeing the video, goes to see her friend, but is quite shocked on finding her dead, and she returns home. While Abbott is informed, that May has a video of Sam. Abbott knowing this, goes to May, and he threatens May as well as her kids, and she hands over the video to him. While Joe, is able to free himself, with the help of a pizza delivery guy, and he goes to see Janice. He wants her help, in order to connect with Caleb, as he knows about an imminent biological attack in the Middle East, where millions of people are going to die. As they get into an argument, Janice's husband, lets them know, that the only place of attack of this significance, at the present time, is Hodge. Janice, knowing the seriousness of the situation, is able to set up a meeting for Joe with Caleb. Joe, also informs Bob about where the attack will happen, and Bob tells him, that he was able to figure it out, and will handle it himself. He also asks Joe, not to go public with the information, as it might cause a lot of unrest. We then get to see Bob, pointing a gun at Abbott's head, as he was able to figure out everything. Abbott tells him, that this is the only way to eliminate all their enemies, and there is nothing that can be done at this point to stop the attack. We then get to see Deacon reaching Mecca. Being there, he also has a flashback of the torture he faced, by the hands of Ibrahim Salah, and he is also there. While Sharla, following Gabrielle, reaches her home, and was about to take a shot, when she is stopped by Marty. She tells her, that she was able to figure out that she is working for Bob, and despite having a grudge against him, she will not throw the case, and wants to get to the truth. Meanwhile, Abbott tells Bob, that they will now have to prepare for the aftermath, and he forgives him, if he has to take him out. Bob, knowing Abbott is more useful alive, and now they will need to handle the situation, spares him, and tells him about Joe getting ready to go public. But before giving his location, he makes a deal with him. Gabrielle, receives Joe's location, and is on the move. Sharla and Marty, decided to follow her through the tracker they planted. Joe, tells Caleb everything, and he thinks that if Caleb puts out the information, the CIA might be forced to call it off. After a lot of contemplating, Caleb agrees to do so, and starts recording a message. But before he could finish it, Gabrielle reaches there, and she kills everyone, except Joe. She takes Joe with him, and asks him to drive. She lets him know, that the contract on his life has been lifted, and that is why he is still alive. In addition, she informs him, that Charlotte will no longer be a threat to her, as Marty is also in on it, and she will take care of her. Joe, being frustrated with not being able to save any of his friends, knowingly crashes the car. As the dust settles, Joe gets out of the car, and leaves an unconscious Gabrielle alive. While Sharla, following the tracker, reaches the warehouse, and goes in with Marty. Marty takes out Sharla, but before going down, she was able to shoot Marty. Joe, learning that Marty is in the hospital, reaches May, via her elder son. B. 
Being a nurse, she is able to help Joe, abduct Marty. As Joe interrogates Marty, she first tries to confuse him, and then to get away. But Joe, was able to catch her, and forces her to talk. She lets him know, that she wanted revenge from Bob, as well as the agency, as they sidelined her. And being in Saudi she spotted Sam and Eldon. She later seduced Eldon, and gained access to his computer, and learned about their entire plan. Having the information, she blackmailed Abbott, and was able to stay alive, as she informed them, that if anything happens to her, the information will come out. Joe, knowing the same, reluctantly shoots and kills her, hoping that with the information out, people might be saved. On the other hand, as Gabrielle returned home, someone was waiting there to take her out, but she has the upper hand, and gets out safely. And she asks the driver to take her to the airport, as she wants the people who came after her to pay. While Joe, goes to his uncle. Bob confesses to him, that he gave his location up, as it was the only way to save him, but he knew nothing about this plan, until yesterday. Joe, tells him what he did, but Bob lets him know, that there is no calling off the plan, as all those who plan it are radicals, and there is no kill switch, and if they try to stop it and fail, they won't be able to contain the fallout. But since he made sure the information gets out, a lot more people will now be radicalized. While Joe was hoping, that when the news will be printed, they will be able to prevent it. It is when Bob informs him, that the Washington Post already has the story, but they won't publish it, as it might cause a stampede at the Hodge. But if the attack happens, they will know who is responsible and will blame them for it. Joe, along with Bob, returns to the Situation Room, hoping for a Hail Mary to stop the attack. While in Mecca, we get to see Deacon, killing the Al-Qaeda leader, who imprisoned and tortured him, and he is waiting for the final day of the Hajj, to release the plague, as this will ensure that no one falls sick at the Hajj, and when the Hajis will return home, it will maximize damage. In the States, Abbott reaches the control room, and he wants them to stop looking, as there is no stopping it. It is when they receive a call from Gabrielle, she informs Joe, that she is in Mecca, and can stop the attack, provided she is paid. Abbott doesn't want to stop, and tries to stall them. It is when he receives the news, that his wife passed away, and he leaves. Bob, calls the director, and they get the payment transferred to Gabrielle, and as promised, she takes out Deacon, and stops the attack. With all that transpired, Joe is not happy with his uncle, and decides to leave. A year later, we see Joe living in Italy with his girlfriend. There, he is contacted by Gabriella, and she tells him to watch his back, as he never knows, when the CIA will decide to come after him. She also lets him know, that he holds a special place for her, as he is the one that got away. And as the season ends, we see Joe, hacking into Abbott's laptop, watching him put in his password, and he plans to destroy him. Thanks for watching. And if you liked it, please subscribe.